Hi there, I'm Claudette George and welcome to another episode of Career TV, brought to you by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. Our aim is to keep you and your family safe in the sky. Today we'll be looking at uh, career opportunities in the drone and the helicopter area. Um, so let's first define what drone technology actually is. So this talks to unmanned um, aviation where there's no crew, no passengers on board. These are also remotely piloted vehicles where um, they have efficient speed, level control and um, are very dependable in many aspects of aviation. Uh, helicopters are also used for recreational purposes but are very indispensable during wartime, medical evacuations and surveillance. Um, so this is my take on the two areas. Our guests today will be able to provide more information and give you an insight on what drones and helicopters actually do. Um, it might actually inspire you to take on a career in these fields. Um, let's meet them now. Aubrey, can you please introduce yourself? Hi Claudette, my name is Aubrey Sipataka. I'm a commercial pilot, fixed wing, drone pilot and drone maintenance technician. What a profile. Um, Ayala, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, good day, Claudette. My name is Ayala Maswazi Mavuso. I am an aircraft accident investigator at CAA, but I also am a helicopter pilot. Thank you so much. Wow, that's a very uh, hefty profile you guys have there. Um, so I'm sure our guests are wondering why we've actually placed these two careers in this episode, uh, being drones and helicopters. So we want to actually dispel the myth that drone technology is taking over um, aviation, you know, and making other forms of transport obsolete. This is further from the truth. Drone technology is an exciting aspect of aviation um, and forms the mirage of aviation technology. So we require helicopters, fixed wing aircraft and general aviation, but um, we still need drones as well. So um, I'd like for you to maybe give us an insight of what a drone um, pilot actually is, what it entails, and how you actually become a drone pilot. A drone pilot is somebody who's in charge of the safe operation of uh, the drone. So we have different kinds of drone pilots. We have drone pilots that are engaged in security and surveillance. We have delivery pilots that are delivering uh, medical equipment. We have firefighting drones. We have survey drones and we have other drones that are applied in different uh, fields as well. With that being said, um, with all the different things that they can do, does this mean that there's different types of drones, different sizes of drones? Take us through uh, the types of drones and their uses. Absolutely, we have different types of drones, namely we have the multi-rotor drone, we have the fixed wing drone, and we have a VTOL drone. So these drones uh, differ in shapes and sizes. So some of them are very small, some are large, depending on the payload they need to carry on them. Ayala, can you maybe take us through helicopter pilots? Um, what are the career opportunities involved when you are a um, helicopter pilot? And obviously, what is required? Um, I'll group it into um, different sections. So we have the EMS pilots, which are doing um, the medical um, airlifting for critical pi uh, patients to hospitals. And then we've got the um, SAPS, South African Police Service. Um, they use the BK-117 and the squirrels uh, for patrolling in conjunction with the security companies. I mean, you, we all have, or some of us have trackers in our cars and in those helicopters, they, they find the um, stolen vehicle. And then we have the agricultural side. We have the crop sprayers. We have the game captures. Um, they need smaller helicopters to do game captures. And then we've got the helicopters do firefighting. I mean, we remember the fire that happened in Cape Town a couple of years ago, where the Hueys, the yellow Hueys that were um, um, involved with that. And then I personally was in the, um, the um, passenger and cargo. So some helicopters are used for passengers. It depends on the size. It was a much larger helicopter. Mm -hmm. And some are used for cargo, for uh, moving cargo. So mm -hmm. the, the list is endless when it comes to helicopters. So a lot of what you're saying sounds 
a bit familiar, you know, between the two. So there's certain things helicopters can do, but drones can do this as well. So can you maybe just briefly explain to us how the two come together and obviously how they, you know, the advantages of, of either? Absolutely. So with drones, uh, you find that they can do similar things to helicopters, but at a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that uh, deploying drones to such missions um, is cost effective and makes the most sense where you need to just do a 30 minute job with a drone as opposed to hiring a helicopter that has to fly from far away to come do that same job. It might cost you quite um, a lot of money to do that. And in terms of helicopters, the benefit um, of actually having the, the helicopter as opposed to a drone? So it just depends on the operation um, that you, so it, it's operational requirements. Um, um, as uh, Opry said, drones are much smaller than helicopters, so helicopters are more powerful, so they can reach certain areas that drones cannot, for instance, in the forest or in the middle of nowhere. So when it comes to power, that's that, and then obviously how many people you need on how, or how much cargo you need to uh, carry in a helicopter as opposed to a drone, which mm -hmm. can only carry so much. So for me at the moment, the jobs can be similar, and sometimes you get instances where both a helicopter and a drone is required. Uh, for a job. I mean, an example of that would be when they located the tiger that was prowling. Mm -hmm. uh, they used both a drone and a helicopter to get the tiger um, captured. And that also just explains the advancement of drone technology and the equipment that they actually have that they can use. Um, so instead of us saying that uh, drones are overpowering or taking over aviation, the two actually work hand in hand um, in aviation and it's a, a relationship going forward that obviously will advance. Um, Ayala, could you maybe um, tell us a bit more um, on a personal level? How did your love and passion for aviation begin? And um, tell us about becoming a helicopter pilot. Okay, I was raised, born and raised in an area called Katlehong in Ekuruleni. And I moved over to another area close by called Sprayview, similar area. So um, growing up there, there was not much about um, aviation. And um, funny enough, later on, I found out I actually grew up on a runway. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Palmit Fontaine Airport. It's okay. now since been, um, that's not being used anymore. Mm. And um, then I went to high school. I, I did my high school, or my, I matriculated in Sunrod Park High School. And around about there, that's when I heard about flying on TV. They were talking about a flight school. And, but my future had already been projected to go into sciences. So I went to varsity to do my science, um, did my BSc, and I completed it. And um, at the same time, actually, my brother had started doing his CPL and he was flying for another company. So he also encouraged me. Um, so when I was looking for a job, I saw an advert talking about um, the looking for helicopter pilots and I applied. So they uh, what they required was a maths and science preferably six and seven, which helps because in the theoretical subjects you do in aviation require you to pass with a 75%. Mm -hmm. So I then did that, um, I, got the, I got into a flight school in Vonderbom. So different airports have different flight schools. Um, just find the closest one, mm -hmm. closer yeah. to your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so I did my PPL, which is a private pilot license in Vonderbom. Um, there were eight theoretical subjects that you must pass. Like I said, you must get 75%. And then to complete my PPL, I needed 50 hours flight time. Mm -hmm. And that took about six months. And then I moved over to do my commercial pilot license, the CPL, which took another year and a half. So altogether it was two years. Mm -hmm. um, same subjects, but just on a higher level. So you have to repeat the subjects again. And then I needed a further 150 hours. So all in all, it was 200 hours within two years to get my commercial pilot license. Um, just on that, um, for someone who wants to be a helicopter pilot, if you're doing your PPL, is it helicopter specific? Or if you do your CPL, are you able to then transfer over to a fixed wing? Or is it helicopter specific? Like if you've chosen helicopter, that's what you're doing. So that's very important. Before you even start, you must decide which one you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because you do a CPL aeroplane and then it's separate from a CPL helicopter. But if you want to jump from one to the other, they do um, credit you okay. some of the subjects and they do credit you some of the hours. So it's not a full uh, license if you want to do the other one, but you can swap and change them if you want to. Um, and for someone who maybe doesn't want to go the full extent of a CPL, if you are a holder of a PPL, which is a private pilot's license, are you able to um, 
be a helicopter pilot with only a PPL or what is the extent and what is the limitations between um, the, the license and your lim limitation? So a uh, PPL is only private flying, so mm. you cannot be remunerated for that. Okay, so it's just for you and your family, basically. Yeah, so okay. yeah, it's for um, what they call recreational flying. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be paid or remunerated, then you have to get a commercial pilot license mm -hmm. and even furthermore, an ATPL, which is an a, um, airline transport pilot license. So that's the difference between the two. Okay, so key points. Make sure um, when you're doing your pilot's license, it's either fixed wing or helicopter and maths and science in high school 100 percent. Aubrey can you maybe tell us about where your love and passion for drones especially um, came from uh, thank you so I grew up in Hammersdale and I attended all my schooling there I did my high, my high school in Alfred Mobani high school from there I went to university because I had not heard about aviation yet and in 2012, I was lucky to meet a pilot who was uh, flying for South African Airways. And from there, he started telling me a lot about aviation and I slowly fell in love with it. And shortly afterwards, I was uh, lucky to get sponsorship from South African Airways to do my commercial pilot's license mm -hmm. for fixed wing aeroplanes. And as soon as I finished my commercial pilot's uh, license uh, training, I heard about drones and I quickly jumped onto it. There was a company that was willing to pay for my drone license and that's how I got into drones and uh, my first job with drones I was doing survey. Mm -hmm. However, uh, it's not a requirement for one to have a commercial pilot's license before they can get a drone license. You can just get a drone license straight with a metric mm -hmm. and there are different schools where one can enroll in that are listed on our CAA website. Okay, so also you need um, maths and science, but you definitely need matric um, to do your uh, drone pilot's license. Yes, so you don't need to go the full extent of PPL, CPL, ATPL for you to become a drone pilot. Not at all. That's very interesting. And how long does it take um, for you to study to become a drone pilot? And where can you actually do those studies? It takes um, from as little as a month to two months. And you can do it in different schools in Cape Town, here in Johannesburg, there are some of them. Um, the full list is available on the website that people can just look at and choose the school that's closest to them. Mm -hmm. So um, if we're talking to the youngsters watching today, there's um, some youngsters, you know, technology has advanced so much. They've got drones that they play with. How can a youngster evolve something that he enjoys doing into a career? What encouragement can you give um, to a youngster watching? And I mean, he's got a drone. How can he develop this into a, a full-on career path? I think um, the first move would be to get a drone license. Afterwards, uh, they'll be uh, taught about the different regulations uh, that are given in drone use. And they will be able to learn about different drone applications and there are so many companies in South Africa. We have over 100 uh, drone companies that are constantly hiring and looking for newer pilots. However, they can also do um, their own business with drones, mm -hmm. but uh, they just need to get an ROC, which is an uh, operating certificate through the CAA. Mm -hmm. And that uh, enables somebody to do drone business for financial reward. Wow, so this is actually something that you can take to the next level uh, and not only use, you know, for your personal use, but turn it into a career uh, for yourself as well. Ayala, can you maybe talk to the youngsters out there, um, a young aspiring helicopter pilot, someone who watches and sees helicopters fly by every day and, you know, they are so eager to learn and know more. What encouragement can you give a young aspiring helicopter pilot? Claudette, what I can say is um, as a young aspiring pilot, especially helicopter pilots, um, you have to be open-minded. Mm -hmm. The job is not similar to that of an airline pilot. Uh, you have to be open-minded because you can go anywhere at any time and do a lot of research. I mean, we used to just have newspapers back then. Now there's um, uh, CAA website where you can um, look up any career and then the CAA is also doing um, career awareness in different schools and they also do air shows for free. Mm -hmm. So look out for such things, research and you know if you have an open mind you can do anything. Uh, specifically for myself I never knew I was, uh, was going to end up going all over the world. I mean mm -hmm. I flew for 10 plus years going to different countries but that's, um, that's what happens when you um, always on the lookout. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what um, I can say to the young ones. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I'm sure that our audience has taken a lot of what you said, you know, um, and they'll definitely be looking out. And I mean, for the young aspiring uh, aviators out there, I think that this is very informative for them. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, if anybody watching, if you've got questions, if you have comments, any feedback, please feel free to comment below, comment on our videos, um, but also follow uh, the CAA on all our social media platforms. There's Twitter, there's Instagram, and right here on YouTube. Uh, please also click subscribe and the bell so that you do get a notification when the next episode of Korea TV is updated. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at another uh, Korea TV um, episode.